team in front of happy fans, Premiership contenders or not. Oh mate, sensational, great, great way to finish a week off, a bad week. Yes, that's normally tradition. The harder they fall, the stronger they rise. Well, Lauren, Cole Games, just days away now. How's St. Joseph shaping up? <laughs> well, actually, I haven't seen them in training, but I'm always confident the girls will shine. Well, I'm going to check out Dudley and Yetzian. Never count out. If I <laughs> give me five with Lauren. That is sports. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Let's relive our cheering days. In world news ahead, an Anzac Day disaster in New Zealand. Mm, a lot must be doing the same. William joins us with the latest from the Fiji Fact. That's correct, Fanny. A lot of mixed results mm -hmm. with two draws last night. Very unexpected, but today some teams are slowly taking a step forward. I have more on that. Also in sports, Wallabies assemble for Flying Fijians test. And coaches talk up Pacific Rugby Cup final. Schools competition while Nandi Airport College had the secondary schools. Vashnil Prasad, One National News. Yes, and the finals are tomorrow. But just before I go funny, the game is still 1-0. Navo still leading from Stephen Clemens' goal. But just this weekend, a hectic sports tomorrow, PRC final. Sunday, Scotland 7th final, Fiji Fact final, plus Super 14 final. Fiji Television has all the coverage. Funny, very quickly, Bulls or Stormers? Brian Havana is my favourite rugby player, so definitely Stormers. Go Stormers, the Stormers. yes, unfortunately, Fiji and Angelivuki didn't make the team for the final that sports enjoy the weekend. Thank you, William. In World News Ahead. We start sports by crossing live again to the Coca-Cola Games venue, the TFL Stadium in Ludala Bay, and join our man there, Satish Narayan. Satish, how's the feeling amongst all on the eve of the Games? I think uh, it's a different kind of a buzz. Leader talks this week, the no falls start rule. How did school delegates look at that today? It was a lopsided affair. I hope it's not that way in uh, the track and field competition over the two days over here. Satish Narayan, One National News. Under the Combo school is on target to set a Coca-Cola Games record that no other school has ever scored. The Sawani school have won the girls' title for nine years in a row and they'll be aiming for a decade of victories this weekend. History could be on the horizon for Andy Dakambo school athletes. Shnarayan, One National News. Cosmo High School's 4x100 meters relay team has included an athlete from their special school. And Coletta Ravuni is a key member of this side from the Gospel School of Death. 16 year old, Colonel News. For the past few years, Natambo High have produced some of the biggest resistance to the Southern and Eastern Division schools at the Fiji Finals. This year, though, the Western Giants won't be so full of surprises, but they still have one trump card up their sleeves. Ask anyone here and they'll tell you the same. Uh, Natambo is like. In the female, we have only one common name is Alicia. That's now. Lambasa College finished in second place in Zone 1 in the north and is ready to take on the big guns. But the side will mostly be focusing on their field events. Vashnil Prasad, One National News. And among the less fortunate are Talibu side St. Vincent College. As we see, have 17 athletes at the Games but they have to struggle to prepare and bring their squad to Suva for the games. A small fish in the ocean, that's what St. Vincent College of Tailev... Fresh in, but uh, I know my the girls and I are very confident and uh, yes, we can all wait. And we join Satish once again at the National Stadium. Satish, Suva Grammar and ACS defend the boys and girls titles respectively at the Coca-Cola Games. How do you see the battle shaping up tomorrow and Saturday? William, uh, I tell you what, uh, in uh, the camps of the champion, where it will certainly light up tomorrow and Saturday. Thank you very much, Satish, live from the stadium. Two other sports news and defending champions, Fiji, have not been seeded at the RB World Series Scotland Sevens at the end of next month. Current points leader Samoa had New Zealand for the title. 
to football, Inter Milan will play Bayern Munich in European Football's Champions League final. Barcelona defeated Inter 1-0 in the second leg semi-final this morning, but Inter won 3-2 on aggregate to reach their first European Cup final since 1972. As I say, philosophically, he agrees it's not a good place for him to be in. Mm, the same hype is also in the Coke Games. Break rule, no break rule. Three events each five, it's going to be big, Lauren. Uh, sounds like it. Um, what about the ticket sales? Satish mentioned something about the terrace. Correct, Laura. Just like this morning, it was hot cakes. Only about a dozen were left. But if you miss out, don't worry. It's live only on Fiji 1. That is sports, Laura. Thanks, William. Ahead in world news, Ukrainian parliament erupts into free-for-all brawl. And William is next with sports and army officers ready to march in Seven's battlefield. That's correct, Sherry. And they're the two army officers. Welcome by the Kotobala when the Navy new call Matawal. I'll tell you after the break why they could be our timely replacements. Stay with me also in sports. Low turnout at the Pacific Rugby Cup trials. And Lionel Messi bags another hat trick. And uh, recapping the headline. But entertainment for the night lined up. The mm. Bow, Bow Dance Group? Yes. Yeah. That, I can, that information I can <laughs> give you. We can confirm the venue. The venue. Oh, and the entertainment. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Please. All right, the entertainment. Okay, just take us through it. When somebody arrives at the gym that night. Ken Jensen music. <laughs> Wunder music. We've given you something else there. All right, they're slowly coming out. <laughs> You get to sit under your seat, um, you know, put your hand under your seat. You might find I'm an envelope. I'm going to check mine now, just maybe you... <laughs> find an envelope really with some goodies head. in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, all sorts of things. Um, good food, good mm. music, good entertainment, good company. Mm. Yeah, and, and an awesome speaker. <laughs> Do you want to tell me who it is? No. <laughs> Liti? Won't be able to tell you. <laughs> but we'll see you there on the night. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely I will see you there. He hit him in the pocket. And finally, in the fine traditions of trans-Tasman rivalry, the Waratahs Super Rugby team have created their own twist out of the newest all-black promotion. This was Israel Dag last week, a deft touch with the paddling pool. And here's Tars star, Kirtley Bill. Oof, let's put it on ice. And the All Blacks body skills well and truly mocked. Give some sauce too, mate. <coughs> Great stuff. Uh, that's all from the newsroom. Give some sauce too, mate. <coughs> Great stuff. Uh, that's all from the newsroom. Have a blessed evening until at the same time at the top of the hour. Till tomorrow, good evening. And Satish is here with Sport and they're out. They are rivals, but they are the best in the Sevens World Series so far. Absolutely, William. New Zealand is ready to show everyone else black in the last two tournaments in London and Scotland. We After end netball plays only one national championship in a season, that's in a year. Well, let's now join William, who's been following the story. Do you think that's enough to give netball players good exposure and top-level competition here at home? Satish, it's a big question. We can begin by just comparing it to the biggest two playing sports in the country, and that's rugby and football. Imagine rugby without the Digicel Cup or Fair Brother. Now imagine football without the National League or the three major tournaments plus the Champions League. Now that's the case with netball right now. Players simply do not have top-level game time. I know uh, you've been talking to some former netball officials and players uh, right throughout the day. Which path, uh, surely competition-wise, should Fiji netball try to follow so we can produce a better national side? Satish, the feedback I've been getting is very, it's unanimous, actually. All of them are suggesting very strongly to stretch the calendar and put a very fine line between the club games and the district level competition. That has always been Netball Fiji's biggest downfall from the very first place. And also like rugby or football, put in a challenge cup, the IDC not included. So that's, you go, 
at the AGM next month is going to be some big, big decisions Netball Fiji has to make. Thank you very much, William. Tonight, ADP report reveals mixed economic results, new policies to enhance public-private partnerships, and President Obama. Good evening, I'm William Tumbuya also tonight. The hibiscus fever is back in town as contestants vie for the top spot. But first up, more than 20 people were seriously injured and received treatment at the Lambasa Hospital after a horrific accident in Lambasa yesterday afternoon. The incident occurred on Korobuli Bridge and, and reports of dengue fever on the rise. Good evening, I'm William Tumbuya also tonight. Fiji Showcase draws the curtains on a high note. The Fiji Sugar Corporation is now taking on a new approach with reforms on to turn around its financial situation. Let's join William now. What can you tell us uh, more about this story, William? Thank you, Satish. What we've also come to find out is astounding. A top team Fiji official from the 2007 Pacific Games confirms it wasn't only volleyball that was guilty of consuming alcohol in Samoa. Other federations also were caught. And mind you, it wasn't while they were in the hiding. It was out in the open. Some of them even becoming abusive of officials at the games while others were picking fights with other athletes. I can also confirm that Fessenock offered counseling for these athletes when they came back from the games for a second chance. None of them showed up particularly volleyball. Since its inception in 2009, back for the third straight year, uh, Australia, England, Jamaica, New Zealand, and South Africa. Fiji surely has another tough tournament as the newcomers this year. History has seen Samoa eliminated. Venue change, matches postponed, electric shock, terrible weather, and good food. The signature of a typical Fiji football major tournament, it's ridiculous, but no matter what, you're guaranteed a spectacle. Hopefully this weekend the court's IDC will continue and finish. Here with their fingers crossed, uh, Bob Kumar, Fiji FA CEO and Mahan Prasad. Rao, Bulubinaka. Well, thank you very much for the piano lessons, Bulubinaka. That, that was really, uh, really nice. <laughs> really nice indeed. You mentioned about overseas players. That's a really unique call that I just got. William Tambuya, Fijiwa News. We'll join William Tambuya now. William, tell us if Rasinga has made the shortlist and any further update on interviews tomorrow. This afternoon, Rasinga confirmed there's still no contact from Rugby House. That likely means he's out. Now, after total 16 applicants, the only one from overseas is from New Zealand. Now, we've gathered a few names likely shortlisted amongst them Watisoni Ratulevu, Chosatengi Savo, Alfred Tinder, Ilias Ataniwola, and Sileso Naitenge. Now, Naitenge has just exclusively confirmed to Fiji One News just moments ago this afternoon that he's scheduled for a 1.45 p.m. interview tomorrow at Rugby House. But he's in Kenya, and he's been trying to contact Rugby House. It's not an easy task since the Rugby House are tight-lipped about the issue. But we do confirm that another applicant is due for interview at 4 p.m. tomorrow, Vili. Thank you, William. Still on rugby, the Fiji TV Provincial 7 Series is expanding its...